useful sentience. Everybody knows about climate change, and if you read the newspaper, you can see that it poses serious risks, like polar ice melting and coastal flooding. Obviously, we need to cut back on our greenhouse gas emissions, but that's not so easy, and that hasn't been going well. Some scientists have been looking at ways that we might be able to counterbalance uh, global warming. Uh, they're talking about large-scale interventions in natural systems, and this is often called climate engineering. For example, we know from that volcanoes uh, emit large amounts of very fine powder into the air, and this cools the planet uh, for about a year or so. If we could mimic this somehow, we might be able to counterbalance the warming effect of climate change. But this raises a lot of, uh, of potential problems. For example, it will change rainfall patterns. What do we do if, if some regions suffer from this, if they have drought? And that's where my work comes in. I look at the possible ways to regulate uh, climate engineering and its research. When people first approach an issue like regulating climate engineering and its research, the first thing that often comes to mind uh, is binding rules. Uh, but, but that can be difficult. First, uh, countries are very reluctant to agree to binding rules. Uh, and second, we don't know exactly what climate engineering will be. How do we create rules for something that we don't know what it is yet? So there are a couple of other options. One possibility is that uh, experts could develop uh, guidelines, some general principles that climate engineering researchers could follow. And another possibility is compensation, so that if uh, somebody is harmed by uh, sudden changes in the weather, for example, less rainfall hurts their agriculture, there is something they could turn to, a system sort of like an international insurance program where they could receive compensation for the damages. So I'm an American uh, living in the Netherlands, and there's some real differences between the countries and between the cultures. One challenge I, I faced was to rebuild a professional network, and one way that I did that is through social media. I, I, I started a Twitter account where I uh, uh, update people and engage with people on my research topic. A number of years ago, I got my master's degree, but then I left the university feeling that it was somewhat isolated from the world. I wanted to, uh, to address problems, so I, uh, I worked at an advocacy organization for a while. But then in terms of my career, I felt I needed to get a PhD, so I returned to, uh, to a university. And I found this topic, climate engineering, where not only is it interesting, uh, but there's opportunities for me to contribute to a dialogue which I think does contribute to addressing problems. Faces of Science